Wonderful medley. Thank you so much, Jennifer Farron. And good morning, everyone. Good morning. And good morning to everyone that's watching online. <sighs> Welcome to Unity Athens on this beautiful December day, and it's not snowing. If you want snow, you got to go to Hawaii. It's just <laughs> talking about that. <laughs> uh, for our opening prayer this morning, let's just get comfortable however we see that. Perhaps it's putting your feet on the floor and taking some deep breaths. Perhaps if you're at home, it's just stretching out or you might be outside. And just turn within, taking a breath and letting it go. I'd say good morning to whatever your name for the divine is. Just breathing. Allowing the peace that passes all understanding within your heart. Feeling connected to that divine love, that infinite presence. Breathing, 
letting go. We thank you for all the gifts of this day and of this year. We thank you for all the joy and the love in our lives, our dear ones, our families, our friends. We thank you for all the places of worship across the globe. We see them blessed. And perhaps we put our hands over our hearts and tell ourselves how much we love ourselves. Thank you for this day, God. Thank you for this day. And so it is. Maybe a stretch. Kevin, if you turn my mic down just a little bit. There we go. How about two stretches, Jennifer? Okay. Okay. One stretch here. And then one stretch there. But if you have rotator cuff issues, then there's one thing there and one there. So we get some medical advice too. I love it. I love it. And how are you doing today, Jennifer? I love your mask. You don't need to have it on unless you want to while you're performing. But I'm doing yeah, good. Yeah, I'm keep, I think I'm going to keep it on just for okay. comfort. Okay. Yeah, that makes us feel good. So thank you for being here. As Jennifer lives in Kennesaw, Georgia, which is more than just a hop, skip, and jump down the road. So we That's really appreciate. Mile trip. Yeah. That's how much I love you guys. And her beautiful mother, Karen, is with us today also. So we're going to read the Daily Word, which is on your phone, just in case you don't have a paper copy handy. And today's Daily Word is peace. We are in the second week of Advent, which is symbolized by peace. And I'm going to light the candle for peace. Last week was faith and hope. Peace is turning within. Peace is far to achieve. <laughs> it is. <laughs> no, we're going to see it and ways to achieve it more easily today. The daily word is peace. And the affirmation is, I choose peace. If you'd like to say that together, we can. I choose, I choose peace. peace. I choose peace. And one of the things we can do if we're not feeling peaceful is when something comes into our existence, our consciousness, that seems disturbing or troubling or out in the world, we can have that feeling of peace. And we can say something like, well, I choose peace. Or if we're in conversation that seems difficult with somebody else, we can say, I choose peace. And we have that up on the screen also. As I continue on the Advent journey, my thoughts turn to peace. I remember what gives me peace, the beauty of a sunset, a comforting hug, a heartfelt prayer. In those moments, peace encompasses all of my thoughts and feelings. Feelings are so important. Transforming any worries or troubles, I wish to carry that feeling with me always. I realize I do not have to wait for specific experiences to feel peaceful. I have the power to claim peace at all times, in all situations. I affirm that divine peace is greater than any worldly condition. I'm going to read that again. I affirm that divine peace is greater than any worldly condition. Okay, one more time. <laughs> That's a great affirmation. When you're going through this stuff again, I affirm that divine peace is greater than any worldly condition. I remain centered and calm and don't let minor irritations knock me off center or linger in my awareness. God's peace is my peace forever. And that's another wonderful affirmation. God's peace is my peace forever. And from Philippians 4, verse 7, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so it is. Thank you, Unity Worldwide Ministries, for these beautiful daily words. You can always find them online at dailyword.com. And we also have printed versions in booklets. 
So yes, great, great to see people here today. It's always yes. so wonderful, people, oh, wonderful. And we have some announcements. Yay. Love announcements, that's why we do that. <laughs> it's been on and gone, it's announcement time, okay. And here they are. I'm teaching a class on a wonderful book called A Trip to Bethlehem. We've got good attendance starting out on that. We're teaching it live here at Unity Athens on Thursdays from 1 until 2.30, and then there is a Zoom class on Thursday evenings from 6 until 7.30. This is a wonderful way to journey through this Advent season and think about how the Bethlehem story relates to your life. It brings up some very interesting thoughts and ways to look at, new ways to look at old things. And the book is called A Trip to Bethlehem by Unity author Apashia Hosbrook. It's close. If not perfect, it's close. And I don't believe she's in the body anymore. But the book is great and the classes are great. So if you are interested, you can join in at any time. Just talk to me personally or send an email to unityathens at gmail.com. We are having some new member classes that will be starting in January. So if you're interested in taking the next step and becoming a member of Unity Athens, it's always such fun to teach these classes and to have new member ceremonies, and which is optional. You don't have to take the ceremony to be a member. But um, they'll be in January. We're not sure what morning it'll start, but it'll be, for the, be before the service, probably about 9 o'clock. We have a wonderful team of prayer chaplains. I am so grateful for our prayer chaplain team. They hold up our church. They hold up our consciousness. They are a, like a web of light that holds us up in prayer. Anytime something seems to be going on, whether in my personal life or in the life of Unity Athens, first thing I do, go to prayer. And it's always easier if something's going on to pray with somebody else to help them lift you up. So today our prayer chaplain is Martha Cook. You wanna raise your hand a little bit, Martha? And all you need to do is just go up to her after the service and say, Martha, would you pray with me? And she will say, yes, behind her mask. <laughs> and we'll go, you can go off somewhere a little quieter and save distancing if you'd like and pray together. Peggy is continuing her early morning, early birds class on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6.30 to 7.30. And again, these things are things you can just <clears throat> hop on to. You don't need to sign up to come to every Tuesday and Thursday morning. I understand that the discussions are rich and she's been going through the 12 powers. I think that's it for the announcements. You might want to pick a big yay on that one yay! too. You can see we've got our trees up. We Jennifer helped stay last Sunday. Thank you so very much. We got some great pictures of the tree going up. But oh my goodness, there's not hardly any ornaments on it. It does have an angel on top. So if you want to stay after for even a little bit, we've got some boxes of ornaments and you can put them on the tree and that will help us get the decorating done. Now, however, my most favorite ever Christmas tree in my whole life and in the world is back there because it's purple. I love it. It's not even like purple's my favorite color, but that's a <laughs> wonderful purple tree. <laughs> And that one's fully decorated, except for some silver ornaments and some candy canes that we have. So you can also help with that one. And I'd like to give a big round of applause to everybody that helped last Sunday, including Jennifer. Thank, Thank you so much. much. <laughs> well, we're going to have meditation in a minute. How about a song before that? Something on your keyboard or up your sleeve? Yeah. However, see if you remember this old Diva Goody. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river. I got peace 
Christmas trees look extra special when the apple lights off. I'm going to stand up here for a change. So let's again think about our breathing. If there's anything going on in the mind, of course there is. Just set it aside. You know, if it's not beautiful and peaceful, just let it go and return to that peace like a river feeling. And if thoughts come in during meditation that seem busy or troubling or less than peaceful, it's okay. Let acknowledge them and either let them go or put them aside. And again, we think about our breathing. We think about the breath, this cleansing, energizing, so easy for most of us to just take a breath and let it go. And during the meditation, we'll have one or two minutes for deep silence in a bit. Right now, just Feel your body temple as a beautiful gift from God. Perhaps with your chakras aligned, your back straight, your feet pointing toward Mother Earth and flat on the floor. And we breathe in peace. Perhaps picture the word peace in your mind, behind your eyes if they're closed. Perhaps write it in the air with a finger. And as you write it, feel it giving you energy calmness. You are a peacemaker. 
You are a way shower. Feel that symbol, that word you may have written of peace. Shining brightly and radiating out to touch others. Dear ones, family, friends, perhaps someone that's transitioned. People you may not know personally, but that you've heard about. Perhaps something or someone in the news that didn't seem peaceful. Send peace now, if you will. Peace to our country, to our homelands, our lands of origin, all across the globe, we send peace. We send peace. where hearts may be feeling broken or very sad. We send peace to those that feel encompassed by anger. We send peace to those who are dealing with health challenges or in the hospital or have dear ones that are. Send peace to our planet, our Mother Earth. Seeing it in all of its divine wisdom, continually adjusting, rejuvenating, realigning. And as we begin to turn within into that place of quietude, into that place where we are open to experience, to hear, to know the voice of spirit, the nudges, the guidance, the wisdom, and most of all, the deep peace. Of all that is, we turn within now the quiet. knowing that we can return to that sense of quietude, that place of guidance, of appreciation, of hope and joy, peace and love.
in any time. Opening eyes only when we're ready. Perhaps letting a big breath out. As we turn on our lights, leave our candle burning. We're not having the Advent candles here. Oh, that really kind of quieted me down, Jennifer. Could we have maybe a little peppy thing or whatever? Would you, would you like a peppy thing? I was going to do a little peace on earth chant. Do, let's do that. Oh, a chant is always, chants are always peppy to me. <laughs> up their free copy of A Christmas to Remember. It's our Advent booklet. Unity Worldwide Ministries is the division of Unity that does the publishing. And they are gung-ho these last few years putting out booklets. And we're so delighted to have so many of them. All the booklets on the table are free for the taking. Free for the taking. And Where Reverend Bronte Colbert wrote all of the meditations in the back of the book. We did. And it was kind of a group. Was it Epiphany? All the, it was all the days of epiphany in all the days of the 12 days of christmas oh, yeah, yeah. The following christmas and they're using the 12 powers which is a charles fillmore thing which we've celebrated for years here and we had always this 
recitation that we would do. And it just kind of evolved over the years. And Ellen Devonport up there, the editor, I mentioned to her I had one for wisdom when I did an article on wisdom. And I just casually said, if you ever need one for the other powers, let me know. And she said, oh my god, I can use all 12. <laughs> Like, I'm on it. Oh, yeah, and then they put them on the website and now in the booklet. So they're over at the table, and it might be a feel by the door, but please take one. If, or if you know someone else that would like one of these, please. Pick Is it, it up. basically the daily word for December? Does it take the place of the daily word for it December? It doesn't take the place. They used to um, copy the ones for Sunday okay. from here, but they don't now. It's more like a story on Sunday. Okay. And then it's the four different advents. So this particular section is on peace. And I wrote one for joy also in here. This is from Reverend Beatrice, Beatrice E. Gallardo Bell. And she wrote about peace. Peace is a choice. Regardless of the circumstances I am going through, it's up to me to live from my center of peace. For many years, she says, living a hectic life with many external requirements, I wondered how to live in peace. Sometimes I had moments of calm that soon faded. I remember one day, away from the bustle of the city, I sat on the bank of a small stream. You feel that energy. Its calm water sounded melodious when colliding with the stones. I stayed there listening to that harmonious sound as it flowed and flowed. In a few moments, I noticed that my body had relaxed and my mind was calm. I stayed there for a long time, wrapped in the magnificent lullaby nature gave me. At that moment, I realized inner peace was possible, that this can be a real state of being. It's up to us to find the tools and resources to achieve it and stay in it. With the passage of time, I have come to know that peace is a choice. It is up to me to decide moment by moment whether I reject it or I claim it and accept it. I love that. And I love she said, it's up to us. It's not, up. I'm going to tell you now how to get inner peace. It's up to us to find the ways to find it in our busy lives. And from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 11 and 12, let them seek peace and pursue it, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. And of course, in <coughs> unity interpretation, there's not righteous and unrighteous. We know that God's in everything. Whew. So, how are we? How are we peacemakers? How are we peace showers? How are we peace spreaders? How do we, what is our role in this role of being peace? I really believe, like everything else in New Thought, depends on our words and our thoughts. That's why they call it a New Thought. Let's have a New Thought. It makes a difference. And as we walk in the world, if we hold, and we can't perhaps hold peace all the time, sure things are gonna bother us. I get lots of things bothering me, and it's like sometimes I gotta vent, sometimes I saying last week I gave out a couple primal screams over something or the other. That felt good, actually. Um, I'm not telling everyone to primal scream right now. But <laughs> <laughs> I see some, yeah, I've done that. But it's up to us to find that core, that center, especially walking in the world. And that doesn't mean walking in the world where there's other people. It means our path. It means the steps we take. It means our thinking time. It means our reactions. Do you watch the news? Oh, oh my goodness. Don't have to, you know. You don't have to. And don't watch a lot of it, I would advise, but that's me. Or I, you know, I record one particular half hour thing and then I watch it in five minutes and just scan through it like that and that. But it, it's time for prayer. If we go into news, whether we're reading it in something or online, which is going to come at you no matter what, <laughs> consider it a prayer exercise. Oh, look at that thing that makes me unhappy or, you know, is upsetting or disturbing or worrying. I can do some prayer on that. 
And just maybe hold your hands up to the situation or the persons, these players and these scenarios that are going on in so many different ways. Just bless them all. Not the home, the good and the bad. Just bless them all. Unity's five principles are always worth repeating. Number one, God is all good and everywhere present. And there's tweaks on this that different centers do. Sometimes the hardest one, because people say, oh, mm, no, no, if God is all good and that's in everything, how can this or bad thing happen? No, no. But it is, God is all good. And it's, um, Jonathan Livingston Seagull, Bach, the writer, said, we are, I didn't write this down because it just came to me, but I'm going to say it. We are fun-loving creatures. We are the otters of the universe. <laughs> the otters of the universe. Nothing can hurt us. The scene in the book was watching a movie. And nothing can hurt us any more than anything is getting hurt on that screen. We are living beings and spiritual bodies and mindset and we walk through this world and that is our choice on how we are going to react, how we are going to make a difference. So consider making a difference more with peace. Merv Fillmore said this, there are no discords in my being. That's a big statement. No discords. She didn't say, like I just said, well, when you get a discord, just, you know, work it this way. She says, no discords in my being. My faith, understanding, and love are becoming one. And then she quotes, what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. And from Reverend Margaret Flick, a Christmas to remember in the Advent booklet, the peace of God is always within us. We can call it forth by spending time in nature, the stream, right? By practicing loving kindness. Practice, it's a practice. Sometimes we gotta practice our practices. By meditating and praying, and with peaceful acceptance of ourselves and others. And that means all the things that are going on in the world and in our lives. Peaceful acceptance, even, and it's hard. And sometimes when it's so hard, you can't. Then you go to a prayer partner, or you take extra time in meditation, or you read a sacred text, or you ask for prayer. It is our connection with God everywhere present that brings us peace. I was doing some decorating at home last night and I, I wanted some music or something on the television because my little dog was in the room with me and he's been a little upset lately. So I was like kind of scrolling a little bit and there was something on, I think from one of the music channels about Silent Night and all these different artists were singing it. And then told the story and you may have heard this story in the past but there's a little tweak in it that I didn't hear in the past. You know, it was written long ago. Um, the actual dates were in the 1800s, composed by Franz Xaver Gruber to lyrics by Joseph Moore in the little town of mm, okay, Obendorf in Salzburg, Austria. It was declared an intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO in 2011. And you know it's been recorded numerous times. But there's a story, which is actually true, that during World War I, which would have been 1914, I believe, it was the first year of the war, <clears throat> the British were entrenched, the German army was entrenched, and they had been firing back and forth. Now, it was a practice some of the stories that have come through haven't been true, but I've found a little more original on it. It was a practice for the Germans to sing this song in German during Christmas, no matter where they were in the war. So they started singing it in their trench. Now, the British army, and they had been shooting back and forth before this, 
the British didn't recognize the words, but they recognized the melody. And so they started singing it in English. And the leader of the German army and the leader of the British army came forward with white flags on their rifles to meet in the middle and to declare a truce for the day, for the Christmas. And it was beautiful. Now, what I hadn't heard was that in years after that, some had suggested, some of the leaders had suggested that they do that again, that they meet and have that quiet in the trenches. But they decided no, because it would be impossible to fight anyone, to hurt anyone, when they saw the humanity in them. Mm. Wow. That's powerful. That's a powerful lesson. Because isn't that what we teach? Principle number two, that God is in everything. And when we open to that humanity, ah, then it's impossible to hurt someone, right? Or it should be impossible to say bad words about them when we're open to that humanity. So that's something to think about too. And then the other three principles are the prayer and meditation make a huge difference. It helps us to realize our connection with spirit, not to create it, it's always there, but to realize it. And then another one is that we create our reality with our thinking, with our words with the way I think we walk in this world. Because it's sort of more than just the words and thinking, don't you think, Jennifer? It's how we present ourselves, how we choose, how we move through life. Our body language. Yes, thank you for that. Because mm -hmm. we're not all speakers too, you know? Some of us don't have voice. So our body language, our eyes, which it's really important these days because I'm looking at all your eyes. <laughs> They're sparkling and happy and it's, you know, sometimes I don't know if someone realizes I'm smiling. I see some cute little baby or child in the store. And yeah, I do like Terry's and I go like, oh, you know, just so the mom sees it. And yeah, we get that compliment out. <clears throat> so and that is one way to remember that we are peace carriers, that we are peacemakers in this world. When we had that light we did in meditation with the word peace, Consider using that and sending it out from your heart space. Send peace. Send light. Send love. Think about words and how we react to people. I was reading some things about Marshall Rosenberg, who started the nonviolent communication movement, and how we choose words, how we react to things. So instead of getting upset, just saying to someone, when you say something like that, it makes me feel this way. Can we talk about this? Versus holding stuff in or going to a friend and saying, you never guess what so-and-so did or said to me. It's things we can work on, but we become an example, a living, breathing example of a peace being in this world. Those are some of the things that this week in Advent has shared with me. And to close this talk, I'd like to share with you <clears throat> a poem written by Dr. Maya Angelou. Let <clears throat> me get a drink of water. <clears throat> it's called Amazing Peace, a Christmas poem. Thunder rumbles in the mountain passes and lightning rattles the eaves of our houses. Flood waters await us in our avenues. By the way, this was written in 2005. Snow falls upon snow, falls upon snow to avalanche over unprotected villages. The sky slips low and gray and threatening. We question ourselves, what have we done to so affront nature? We worry God. Are you there? Are you there really? I always look up in the attic. Does the covenant you made with us still hold? 
Into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancor, come the way of friendship. It is the glad season. Thunder ebbs to silence, and lightning sleeps quietly in the corner. Floodwaters recede into memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion to yield us as we make our way to higher ground. Hope is born again in the faces of children. <clears throat> it rides on the shoulders of our aged as they walk into their sunsets. Sunsets. Hope spreads around the earth, brightening all things, even hate, which crouches breeding in dark corners, corridors. In our joy, we think we hear a whisper. At first, it's too soft. Then only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength. We hear a sweetness. The word is peace. It is loud now. It is louder, louder than the explosion of bombs. We tremble at the sound. We are thrilled by its presence. It is what we have hungered for. Not just the absence of war, but true peace a harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesies, a comfort of courtesies, security for our beloveds and their beloveds. We clap hands and welcome the peace of Christmas. We beckon this good season to wait a while with us. We, Baptist and Buddhist, Methodist and Muslim, say, come, peace. Come and fill us and our world with your majesty. We, the Jew and the Janus, the Catholic and the Confucian, implore you to stay a while with us so we may learn by your shimmering light how to look beyond complexion, how to look beyond complexion and see community. It is Christmas time, a halting of the hate time. On this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. At this holy instance, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into the great religions of the world. We jubilate the precious advent of trust. We shout with glorious tongues at the coming of hope. All the earth tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promise of peace. We, angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, look heavenward and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at our world and speak the world aloud, peace. Join me with the peace. Peace, peace, peace. We look at each other and then into ourselves and we say without shyness or apology or hesitation, peace my brother, Peace, my sister. I'm going to add peace, my sibling. Peace, my soul. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Maya Angelou, for the life you lived. Let's give her a round of applause because I know she's up in the others and just perhaps she tuned in. She might be on the live stream. We'll see a little <laughs> note later on. So let's give Maya Angelou a round of applause. If you would like a copy of this, I'm, I'm feeling comfortable doing it. Um, we have to kind of watch copyrights and that, but she wrote the poem for the 2005 White House tree lighting ceremony. So if you'd like a copy after the service, just let us know. How about another song? All right. Would you like another song from Jennifer? If so, clap your hands. Yes. Oh, Tinkerbell. <laughs> Peace on the planet and also within me Love that inspires and helps to transcend me Feeling the blessings that spirit now brings These are a few of my favorite things Shining my light with each note that I sing 
These are a few of my favorite things. When the news bites, when the world fights, and my heart gets sad, I simply remember my favorite things. And then I don't feel so bad. Peace on the planet and also within me. Love that inspires and helps to transcend me. Feeling the blessings that spirit now brings. These are a few of my favorite things. When the news bites and the world bites and my heart gets sad, I simply remember my favorite. different versions of it and so I'm, I'm sitting here singing and laughing because it's like oh this is a version I haven't sung in a long time so <laughs> there's all different ways to be creative there are and you demonstrate a lot of them and your love and your light and your peace shines out from you Jennifer Fair and Thank we're you. delighted to have you delighted to have you here often during these interesting times we hear you just sending peace ah this is the time for our sacred exchange, our ability and our opportunity to give and to support Unity Athens. Some of us like to hold our gifts or the thought of our gifts over our hearts. Knowing that as we give, we receive. But what I've learned in my life is I don't give to receive, I give to give. And the more generously I'm able to do that, it seems the more generously the universe rewards me. But again, it's not to receive, it is to give. We really appreciate the support that Unity Athens has received, and especially in these last 20 months or so. Thank you for continuing to help support us, to keep us in our beautiful space and to help us pay our operating expenses. It is such a blessing to know that we are supported not only by you, but by God, that God is underneath all of this. And if you are struggling yourself and not able to donate, that's okay. But if you are able to give whatever the amount, it's very much appreciated. And it will go to the good cause of keeping sacred space here in Athens, Georgia, a new thought. So we hold our gifts over our heart, grateful for all that we have received in our lives. We have an affirmation Kevin will put up on the screen, our sacred exchange affirmation. There's baskets around the room. We don't pass the basket right now. I kind of like that idea, sacred exchange basket. Every time I look at that basket, I go like, just have some Native American vibes to you. So we can say the sacred exchange together and then to change the screen. Oh, this is fine. Okay, um, Kevin did. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am so blessed. Thank you, God, or your name for the God. Fine, I am. And so it is. So we are going to, I'm going to put my gift. The thought of my abundance in this basket. We hold and bless these offerings. So grateful. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. We are so grateful. We are so blessed. I 
Today we'll have our prayer of protection, which is on the walls, and I'm Kevin Mayer. I didn't pre-tell him to have that up on the screen, but it's on the walls. This is written by James Dillett Freeman. He is poet laureate of unity, and this particular piece of his writing is on the moon, on a microchip. And I love that feeling. Sometimes when I look up at the moon at night, and that's one of my favorite things anyways, the moon, and feeling that energy and thinking there's a little tiny microchip up there. We just bless that microchip too. So, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Awesome. We have a closing song, Jennifer. Hey, how about Heart the Herald Angels Sing? Oh, I love yes. that. Yes. We've got your notes if you want to try to sing along. Oh, yes. I don't know what number it is. Try 279 or in the, it's in the 270s or 260. Yeah, there's this index of titles in the back if someone wants to shout it out. And if you're at home, you can probably look it up online for the lyrics and sing along. I don't know how I can tell you which number it is. Oh, the other announcement, I have another announcement. Okay. We'll have meditation this Wednesday. It's usually the first Wednesday of the month. 274. But I have another thing going on, so it'll be this Wednesday from 1 o'clock until 2 o'clock right here at Unity Athens. And we're very grateful for the folks that are showing up for that. 274? 274. Awesome. Yeah. Close with this, and that's when the live stream will end. Heart the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy by God and sinners with things. Joyful, like to stand up and find joy in the triumph.